welcome to the next lecture in electronics we were discussing the semiconductors and in this particular lecture we will focus our discussion on the carrier concentration in semiconductors both for intrinsic as well as extrinsic semiconductors we know that the conductivity of a semiconductor is just the concentration of the free electrons and the free holes which are present in the semiconductors when it is thermally excited or some external doping is present in the semiconductor the density of the states that is there in the semiconductor is given by the equation n e is equal to gamma e minus e c to the power half where e is the energy which we need to calculate here e c denotes the lowest energy in the conduction band of a semiconductor so we will calculate using this equation how to find the concentration of the states now the fermi di direct probability function is given by f of e is equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power e minus ef by kt where ef is nothing but the fermi level or the characteristic energy for the crystal whose unit is in electron volt we will generally use the equation of the concentration ne and the fermi direct probability function to find the concentration of the charge carriers first let us calculate the electrons in the conduction band and then we will move to the calculation of the holes so the electrons which are present in the conduction band we will be integrating from the lowest energy in the conduction band to the infinite energy for the states ne to the fermi direct characteristic constant so here the inner the fe value we are getting for the condition that e is greater than ec that is the energy which is supplied is greater than the conduction energy level and e minus ef is very very greater than kt so we will get the equation for the fermi equation as f of e is equal to e to the power minus e minus ef by kt which on substitution in the previous equation and on integrating we will find the solution as n equal to nc e minus e to the power minus ec minus ef kt where nc is nothing but the constant which is given by this particular equation where 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 is the charge of a particular electron and here we have mn which is the effective mass of an electron if ev is the maximum valence band energy than the density of the states is given by this particular equation where the equation uh, ec is replaced with ev so ev is the maximum valence band energy now if the same calculation we do for the holes then we have to do 1 minus f of e and in this condition ef minus c is very very greater than k for energy less than equal to the valence band energy so we will be getting the equation as e to the power minus ef by e in by kt so now if we integrate to find the number of holes from minus infinity to now the valence band energy ev we will be getting the equation as number of holes concentration is equal to nv which is again a constant e to the power minus ef by minus e, ev by kt so here mp indicates the effective mass of the hole and we know that electrons and holes are oppositely charged so we are having 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 as the charge of the same hole as well as the electron now if we calculate the fermi level of an intrinsic semiconductor now when we have in intrinsic semiconductor the number of electrons is equal to the holes in the semiconductor and the equation concentration that we have found out for the electrons and the holes we are going to substitute and then if we take the logarithmic on the both the sides and after proper calculation we will find the energy of the fermi label ef is equal to ec plus ev by 2 minus kt by 2 ln of nc by nb now if we consider that both the masses are same that the concentration of the conduction band and the valence band are same then we find that ef is equal to ec plus ev by 2 and in this equation we can draw the conclusion that 
the center of the forbidden energy gap the fermi level is present so the fermi level is present at the center of the forbidden energy gap because we are adding ec that is the conduction energy plus the valence energy divided by 2 which is just the average or the center of the forbidden energy gap now for an extensive semiconductor where the conductor is doped and the doping conductor can uh, semiconductor may be n type or p type here the equation of the fermi energy level ef for both the equation will be governed by the the presence of the donor or the acceptor impurity atoms in the n type we have donor and on the p type we have acceptor impurity atoms and the equation for nd and na we will be getting from the carrier concentration equation now for these equation if we draw the graph then we find that uh, we have the eg as the gap between the valence band and the conduction band and the ef which is the fermi energy level will now be shifting towards the middle of the forbidden energy gap when the temperature is increasing so with the increase in temperature the ef will move towards the middle of the forbidden energy gap so this is our forbidden energy gap between the conduction band and the valence band now let us solve one problem to understand what we have studied about the number of concentration of the acceptor and donor impurity atoms so if you have a n type semiconductor the fermi level is given as 0.3 electron volt below the conduction level at a room temperature of 300 degree kelvin if the temperature is increased to 360 degree kelvin determine the new position of the fermi level so the previous position is 0.3 electron volt we have to find the new position when the temperature is changed from 300 to 360 degree kelvin and this we have to find for n type semiconductor so for n type material or the semiconductor the equation we know that ef is equal to ec minus kt ln of nc by nd where nd is nothing but the donor impurity atoms if we find ec by ef that is nothing but 0.3 electron volt that is the forbidden energy gap between the conduction band and the fermi level and in this equation the temperature is given to be 300 and we have to find the k nc and nd which are the unknowns however we are going to use the ratio proportion method and also at some other fermi level ef1 the equation is ec minus ef1 the temperature is 360 degree kelvin now so these are the two equations that we can form for two different temperature if we divide the second equation with the first equation then we find that ec minus ef1 on calculation is 0.36 electron volt which is the new fermi level energy for before the fermi level was 0.3 electron volt for 300 degree kelvin now we have 0.36 electron volt for a temperature of 360 degree kelvin now the problem that we are going to take is for a p type semiconductor where the old fermi level is 0.3 electron volt and the valence band energy is 3 uh, at a temperature of 300 kelvin which is the room temperature determine the new position at two different temperatures that is 300 kelvin and 400 kelvin so here we know the in a equation of the p type semiconductor the fermi level equation and if we subtract ef minus e ev similar to the previous case we will get kt ln of nv by na where na is nothing but the electron concent uh, the holes concentration for the acceptor impurity atoms now our new old temperature is 300 kelvin so at 300 kelvin the fermi level is 0.3 electron volt which we are substituting here and the temperature is 300 kelvin so we will get the first equation from this fundamental equation now two different temperatures we have to set at 350 degree kelvin what is happening at 350 degree kelvin and what is happening at 400 degree kelvin so when the temperature is 350 degree kelvin we are having a new fermi level which is ef1 and the valence band energy is ev so we can put the temperature as 350 degree and then we can form a new equation 2 similar to our previous case we will divide it and find what is the difference of the energy from the fermi level to the valence band 
which is equal to 0.35 electron volt and this is the Fermi level difference at a temperature of 350 degree Kelvin. When the temperature is 400 degree Kelvin then in that case the, our new Fermi level is EF2 so we have to take the ratio proportion for the Fermi level EF2 minus EV and the temperature is 400 degree so if we divide it with the old temperature of 300 at a room temperature we will find that 0.4 electron volt is the new position of the Fermi level. So with the change in the temperature we see that the Fermi level changes and for N type and P type semiconductor the equations remain the same only the impurity atoms changes. So this completes our discussion on intrinsic uh, concentration and the extrinsic concentration for the semiconductors. In the next uh, lecture we will focus on mass action law and how do with the effect of temperature other variations occur. Thank you for now.